Well, this morning, I, I, there's a couple of things I want to do. I, I want to share a little bit with you about, uh, because Pastor mentioned about some of the things that have been going on in my life and where I'm at today. And then uh, I, I want to share a, just a, a word that I feel that the Lord has given me for you today. And then I want to finish with three questions and one action. Are we ready? Are we ready? Well, I, uh, I, I'm not new to the Toronto area. I lived in Mississauga. I was born in, in Quebec. I came to Ontario at 13 years old. And then I moved. I went west, young man, when I was 19. And that's where I got saved. But uh, uh, I want to thank, by the way, my, my hosts, David and Charmaine, just, just gave me an incredible, incredible evening yesterday. Uh, got here, and David took me uh, gave me the Stratford, Stratford baptism. <laughs> Put me in a, in, a, in, a, in a convertible sports car. Make sure I could see everything. <laughs> and he gave me the tour. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You, you know, <laughs> Shakespeare. I, I just have to tell you that uh, my, my, uh, my, uh, when I was 15 years old, I was declared unmanageable by a judge and put in reform school. And then when I came out of reform school, I went to prison. And so for me, to be or not to be is really to be or not to be stabbed while you're doing time. You know, so I don't have much Shakespeare education. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that refined culturally. And this morning, I thought, David, the baptism worked. I woke up this morning. And, and I, had, I, I had to look it up because I didn't know if it was Shakespeare or not. But I had this, this, this thing. It was this quote. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch, epoch of belief and the epoch of incredulity. incredulity. I, can, I speak three languages sometimes. I can't read one. Incredulity. Does everybody feel like, so I, that turns out it's, uh, who is it? Dickens, thank you, thank you. Well, Y'all are so cultured, you're so cultured. Charles Dickens, I thought, man, where am I? Wake up at a Charles Dickens quote. I'm feeling it, Stratford, all right. Does everyone have the feeling that something's coming? Right? Right, something. Something's coming. And uh, last night we were, I guess so, you know, we're watching some things going on. And, and I want to talk to you about today about what to do about, about the future, how to manage these times. Uh, it, you know, God has, as we know, has plans for us that we can't even think of or imagine. Uh, I came out of prison and I had to uh, go to work. I had to, had to survive. And, uh, you know, my father was an alcoholic, horrendous, horrendous childhood. And um, then, I, I, you know, I got saved when I was 19, fell in love when I was 21. And uh, we just celebrated 51 years. Um, we have five children, 10 grandchildren. We've lived in three nations. My wife had lived in one house when she met me. I've dragged her through three nations, 20 moves. You know, my, my, uh, my thing is better as possible. That's my email, Mike, at better as possible. Right? Better as possible. And I found that when you give your heart to the Lord and you say to the Lord, whatever, whenever, whoever, God goes, all right, I'll take you on. And the adventure begins. And, uh, and that's, that's the name of our, of our book, The Adventures of a Lifetime. Uh, but uh, there were, I, there's too much to tell you. Uh, but 19, was it 93, John, that, that you were on the other side of the airport in that building? Was that 93, somewhere around there? 94. In 93, I was a missionary in Mexico, and... I met these, this Amish man from Ohio. Uh, we got along real good because he had a grade eight education, and so we got along real good. His businessman, multimillionaire, and uh, had had these these guys with him that he turned into multimillionaires. Um, 
and, and he began to speak to me about, about, about the book of Proverbs and values and, uh, and a, a methodology that we call a round table. And, and he said to me, uh, I, I cert, uh, he was so certain, he said, Mike, if you start doing this, you're going to end up in front of world leaders. God's going to open doors to you that are going to be incredible. And I've got to tell you, 30 years later, that, that's what's happened. Uh, I started doing it because I needed to get myself in alignment with God. You know, Deuteronomy 28, when they were getting ready to go to promised land, the instruction came, if you do these things, you will be blessed. If you don't do these things, you'll be cursed. Well, you know, God helped me to change that. Right? If you do these things, you will have benefits. If you don't do these things, you'll have consequences. And that the world can relate to. How many have, a, uh, have, have graduated from the consequences school? <laughs> How many are still in classes, <laughs> taking special classes in consequences, right? Uh, it's always possible, right? We can get out of alignment ever so easy, right? And so uh, I, I started... I started doing it for myself with my family, started doing these roundtables, and then things started opening up. To make 30 years short, I, I have been with generals of armies, I've, I've, I've trained armies, I've trained police, I've trained soccer teams in Latin America, I've, trained, I've, I've dined with presidents, I've been in places that, that whenever I'm there, I always think in my mind, man, John was so right. And the same year, uh, or about some months later, I heard about what was going on in Toronto. It was a move of the Spirit in Toronto. And I was saved in a church in Vancouver, Canada that's called Glad Tidings. And I came into there, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, a Sunday we had, uh, we started with a 9 to 10 was prayer, 10 to 11 was Sunday school, 11 to 1 was the meeting. Two o'clock to three was the youth prayer meeting. Three to five was the youth meeting. Five to six, uh, I mean, then we, we could eat. Six to seven was prayer. Seven to 8.30, nine o'clock, was an evangelistic meeting. The morning meeting was for the family. The night meeting, we had a 100-voice choir. We had music cranked up. That's where I was a drummer. <laughs> we had music cranked up. And always a message on salvation. And, and, and then we'd finish that meeting back to the prayer room. And I would leave the prayer room sometimes at 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning. We'd be like 300 strong in there. And so when I heard that there was, a, and that went on for five years until they sent me to the mission field. And so when I heard there was a move of the Spirit, my wife and I said, well, we need to go there. So we went. And I remember the first building you were in there and, and watched everything that was going on and uh, couldn't believe it. It's like, man, I haven't seen, Wow. But I want to tell you uh, what really spoke to me and really impacted my life. I haven't had a chance to say this, but it was John and Carol. Because I had never seen leadership that loving, that humble. I'd never seen it. And it impacted me. And I, I came back a few months later, and you, now you're on the other side. And, uh, you know, when God moves, it's incredible. I remember coming back to the first meeting. You had scaffolding up. People were working while the meetings were going on. <laughs> right? That's what happens when God moves. Right? He becomes the focus. And again, I watched leadership like I had never seen it. And... Uh, and lo and behold, some years later, John comes with Steve Long and the staff that, from airport and comes to Ohio where we, where we were training. And, and he comes and takes the training. And different pastors would come, leaders, business people. And uh, we, always knew, we always knew because we would have a, an intro night. And we'd have a dinner and people, we'd tell people, take a few, a couple of minutes, two, three minutes to introduce yourself. And we could always tell the pastors in the crowd because... They would always have to go over the two, three minutes. 
I hope I don't do that today. I'll have my third closing. No. Uh, and, and then you'd always hear their, their last revelation, you know, the latest revelation they had. And, and here I thought, I thought when it came to John, I, I thought, he said, uh, I'm, my name is John Arnott. I'm a pastor in, in Toronto, and I'm here to learn. I thought, man. No wonder God has moved. No wonder this house, the Spirit of God is here. In love, you're set. You're set. You're set for what God wants to do. Because you understand love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, and His presence and His wisdom. You will be an attraction. You're not done. The best is yet to come for this house, your influence in this city. I think they'll come to see, hear Shakespeare and see Shakespeare and then come here and see God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so uh, doors began to open and, and uh, uh, so many things have happened. Uh, I, I, you know, too much to tell you except to say that uh, in the last in the last year or so, I, I felt like God was doing something, and, and uh, he started speaking to me about abiding, and I, and I, and I began to, to just set myself aside, set more time to abide in the Lord. And, uh, and uh, he began to speak to me about uh, things that were going on, um, and, and, and then he encouraged me to pray and pray. And so um, there was a, a situation that happened. There's a nation in the world right now that is just... Uh, Really under, the, really under the eye. I don't want to mention the names because this is on video. Um, but uh, um, I, by absolute prayer, just praying, did not know. I felt like if I could get to that president, I think we can, we can help him. We can serve him. And just through prayer, uh, I, there were people in a meeting. They told me, oh, I know. And I know they work. They're, he's a Hispanic Jew. He worked with President Trump on putting the uh, embassy in Israel, in Jerusalem, moving the embassy, which every president said they'd do, but he did. And this man had worked with him for four years. He knew him, got him on his phone, and he said to me, I can get to that president. I'll just call, call President Trump. I can get to him. He couldn't get to him. Somebody else said they could. He couldn't get to him. But then God. Can you say, then God. then God? That's what he wants to do in our lives. He wants us to come to that place where we go, then God. <laughs> and everything changed from there. And so uh, he, God opened the door. Uh, too long of a story to tell you, but uh, I was received by this president at 9 o'clock at night. Can you imagine a president receiving a Canadian? You know, my, my joke is I'm internationally unknown. <laughs> you know, como está su español? Está bien? Internacionalmente desconocido, right? Uh, yeah, it's not just internationally, it's internationally unknown, <laughs> right? And yet, because of prayer, God had me in front of this president, spent an hour with him. We had incredible conversations, prayed with him. He's a believer. And, and, and there's more on that story to come. But the important part of that is that God really wants to answer our prayers. We are to, he's setting it up so we can be praying, and he wants to demonstrate through us. And, and, and he has a big part to play in the future a big part to play. He will be glorified. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. This thing is bigger than you and I, but he wants us involved. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you that it, 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 we're not spectators. We're, 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 this is this is good. This is the geography that we know. You know, somebody up front speaking and <laughs> 
and everybody else listening, and this is good. But this is like, this is like if we were a football team, this is the locker room. You know, this is where we remind ourselves the name of our team, and we remind ourselves that we've got great plays, and we're ready to go, and we're going to go. But the game is out there. The game is in our homes. The game is, is where we work. The game is wherever God takes us. God wants to be there and for us to see, as we sang, to see him in life. And for that, we need to, we need to get some things in shape in ourselves. And so it, it, one thing I want to do today is, is, is to say you're not a spectator. And just, just let that go into your spirit. And this is more than Sunday. God wants to be with us, answer our prayers, glorify his name through us. I really believe the next move of God will not be built around a personality or a movement or a church. It's going to be built, it's going to be manifested in you and I as, 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 as fathers and mothers and husbands and, and wives and grandparents and and. and contributors in society, God wants to manifest himself. Uh, do, are you, are you kind of hearing what I'm saying? Uh, is it exciting you at all? Are, are, are you glad that you're not going to be a spectator? I mean, are you glad about that at all? You know, just a little bit, right? Are, you think, are you glad about that he has plans for you, right? And so here's, here's a word for today. Um, and then we'll go on to three questions, and then we'll go on to, to an action. The word today is surrender. Surrender. God wants us to take a fresh look at what that means. Surrender. Because, you know, I could be a tither, and I am. I, I have a home church. I can be at church every week. I can volunteer. I can do what I can to help the vision and not be surrendered. What's it mean to be surrendered? How do I know if I'm not surrendered? How, how do I know? Well, resistance. How much resistance is in your life? I, uh, you know, I've, I've done an awful lot of traveling. And my wife and I, at one point, were traveling 200, 200 days a year, but we're nowhere near in the league of John and Carol. We're still looking. We're still looking at them as our heroes. We still say, and we can be doing this past our 80th. Oh, this is awesome. This is. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, you get status. You know, you get status when you're flying, and, and, and pretty soon, you know, you've got all the lounges. Pretty soon, you hear your name, you're going into first class, and, you know, all that stuff starts coming your way. And then COVID hits, and then uh, they don't even know who you are anymore. And, and now you've got to show up again, and you're supposed to build all that up. And, and what, I took my flight, came out here on Friday, and and my, my wife booked it because I wanted to be here at a certain time. The only way I can get here was with WestJet, and I have nothing with WestJet. And so, so it's like I show up at the airport, and it's like, surrender. <laughs> surrender. <laughs> no. And, and uh, so I go get my ticket and everything, and they give me my ticket, and I've got, I've got an aisle seat. All right. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not in the middle. <laughs> Because if I was there, I'd be working more harder on that resistance. <laughs> and so everything's all right, great, okay. I'll see. Good, good, good. So I get on the plane, and I'm walking towards the back, and I see that there's there's two uh, uh, stewardess, whatever. They're, they're there talking to this lady, and I'm looking at the numbers, and I get this lady's in my seat, <laughs> sitting in my seat, and, and uh, then the, the stewardess looks at me. She goes, "Oh, is this your seat?" I said, yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what's she doing in my seat? Why is she in my seat? Where, where am I going to sit? You know, and then resistance, you know. <laughs> what's going on here? What, what is this? And, then, and so she goes, uh, 
then I start cluing in, she doesn't want to move. And so they're talking to her and everything, and I'm watching, and I'm going, I hope it's not the middle seat. Said, what, what seat is she supposed to be in? I said, at the window seat. I'll take the window. So then I, I go to get in. This lady can't move. I had to climb over her, literally. <laughs> climb over her, get myself to the window seat. They continue the discussion, one thing to another. The plane is now almost filled up. Now there's four people talking to her, and then they say, she's not flying. And so now we're like an hour late leaving because they had to call this lady's daughter and get her to talk, and to, talk to her and let her know, you're going off the plane, you're not going to fly, we're not leaving. It was like this drama that went on, and I'm watching it, and, and you know, I, I, I'm learning and surrendering. I'm learning that, you know, my opinions, they're really judgments. You know? And, and uh, I, I don't know about you, but do you have opinions? Uh, that, maybe one or two, right? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, just about everybody can draw an opinion from me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can walk into a restaurant. They can get my opinions. You know, it doesn't matter what. My opinions are just lined up. They're lined up waiting to go out. But, you know, surrender. 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 And so, you know, they finally left. And I, we came in, and we were an hour late, of course. And the lady came on, and she said, Welcome to Toronto. You're Luggage is at this place. All of you who have connecting flights, right? So now, because of one person's resistance, 200 people's schedules are off. Planes are missed. Stuff happens just because one person resisted. And I thought, man, Lord, how much am I causing when I'm resisting? That I, as the resistor, obviously she never even thought about that. She just wanted the, what she wanted. But how much resistance my, does my resistance impact my wife, my children, my friends, my, my coworkers? That when I'm in resistance, trying to control, trying to, you know. Resistance is, is a sense of acceptance with peace. Well, Jesus said, he said, uh, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I give you my peace. I've overcome. And so it starts to get into the daily stuff. It starts to get into life. It starts to get into, man, I feel my resistance. And so in a sense, it gives many opportunities to surrender. We have many opportunities every day to say, Lord, my life is in your hands. If this is happening, it's because you're allowing it for some reason. I can't see it. I certainly can't feel it because it's really bothering me what you're allowing. But, you know, I think uh, well, it was eight years to get to the place. A lot of stuff comes up. And, and, and you know, sometimes I'm trying, trying to figure out, uh, could we shorten that? <laughs> <laughs> because when I'm resisting, I'm not hearing. What's really going on is my opinions and my stuff and how this is unfair and this is not right and this is... is this, da, 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 da. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know? You know, you... you, you and, and so, I, I believe God wants us to understand because in, as we go forward now, uh, we're going, history is, is being made, and we have a part to play in it. And if we're uh, not surrendered to the Lord and to His Spirit, we're into resistance. And if we're into resistance, and we're trying to control, and we don't like it, that's what's going on in us. We can't hear 
As we were singing this morning, I want to see you, Lord. We can't see because what's going on in us is all about what I want. And, you know, we, we, I'm 72 years old. I have lived in the best time of humanity, the history of humanity. We have lived in the best time. Look at everything we have had. Look at the way we've lived. We, we don't know, North America, we don't know what going hungry is. We, we, we always have fridge to go to. We have so much control. But I believe in the future, we're going to have to learn a different way to walk because a lot of things are going to get out of control. Have you felt that? Have you felt an out of controlness in the world? There's something like it's going out of control. And so it's about alignment. Because when I'm aligned and I'm, I'm surrendering to God, the benefits are coming. But when I get out of alignment and I'm resisting and I'm, I'm trying to control and I'm trying to, now I'm getting out of alignment, I'm headed for consequences. You know, here, here, most of the problems that are being talked about on the news and everywhere that you hear, and there's a problem here, there's a problem there, this problem, that problem. Can I tell you, they're not problems. They are not problems. They're consequences. And whatever's not working in my life, my problems, they're not problems. They're most likely consequences because I'm not in alignment. And I believe that, that surrender helps us. Uh, it's the greatest tool to, to learn, to implement in our lives because it helps us to accept, first of all, what's going on with peace. And then we're able to see what God's doing. And it, it, and it gives us, there's a, like a, you know, a, a satisfaction of who we are. No, it doesn't matter about the circumstances. We are children of God. We have a heavenly father. I didn't have a very good father, but my heavenly father has made all the difference in the world. Not just for me, but for my family and for my children and for my grandchildren. We have a heavenly father. It doesn't matter what's going on. We have a heavenly father. I don't know about you, but have you ever had, you know, when things start going out of control, do you ever feel like, yeah, I'm so stupid. I can't believe it. Why does this happen to me? Why does this happen to me all the time? No one else? Never felt that? Or have you? Okay, if you felt that, raise your hand real quick. If you felt, oh, okay, all right, okay, okay, we're all together, we're all together. You know, it's, 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 it's culture. I know we uh, Canadians, you know, we're, we're kind of... We're kind of quiet people, you know. If people bump into us, we say sorry. You know, so it's like, you know, Americans, you bump into, hey, what do you want? You know, it's different, different culture down there, you know. But uh, here, I know we're quiet and everything, but I'm just making sure we're connecting. You, 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 are, you, are you with me? And, and, and the thing that I, the word to surrender that there's an acceptance, a peace about what's going on, and that will help us to, uh, to see what God's doing, maybe shorten the time. Because when I'm in resistance and trying to control, I'm, 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 I'm wasting time. And I'm not seeing, I'm not hearing. And then wh when I'm in it, when it's happening, I have to have a, a, a sense of satisfaction with myself. I'm okay. Hey, God is my father. I don't know, these these. God, these What's going on right now may not be the best, but that's okay. He'll work it all out for good. Amen? Somehow he'll work it out for good. How many of you can say God has worked things out for good for you? Right? Uh, I, I was in a situation uh, in a country, and we were going to meet with the president, and uh, there were adults. These were, were three adults that were going to meet with him. And then the word came that... Uh, that there was only two of us going in. And I watched an adult, 
that has, has accomplished many things. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you what, he wasn't a picture of surrender. <laughs> I tell you what, resistance came up. It was incredible to watch. Now, I don't know if it's because I've had experiences. You know, when you're going to meet with a president, anything can happen. That meeting can be canceled. We worked in uh, Nigeria with, uh, how's this for the name, a name for a politician? President Jonathan Goodluck. <laughs> that was his name, right? And so uh, we were scheduled to meet with him at, at 3 o'clock on a Monday. On Sunday night, Nigeria is playing the finals in the soccer Africa Cup and wins. Monday, <laughs> uh, they come into the airport. There's a million people between the airport and the, the presidential palace. You think these guys went to the moon? I mean, it's this incredible long deal. So our meeting went to the side, never be repeated again. So, so you know, when you're going to meet with Brett, it can happen. But I'm telling you, do, do, you, do you have things that kind of... Like this guy, when he heard, that's not going to happen, you're not going in. Have you ever had experiences like that? You weren't chosen. It didn't work out the way you wanted it to work out. It, it, somebody let you down. Uh, somebody lied to you. Something happened. Somebody betrayed you. And, and right away, the best tool we can have is to surrender. Is to surrender. And so, I want to just, uh, three questions and an action to finish today. Are we okay? Yes. Good. Three questions and act. So if you got your phone, you got some notes, get it out right now so you, you get these three questions. Really important that you have these questions. And then we're going to take an action and then we'll be done. But oh, I'm so glad to be here. Hmm. Ready? Question number one, does the Lord know your situation? Does the Lord know your situation? What do you think? Does he know your circumstances? Does he know? Yeah. Father's love, Father's love. You've had so much revelation here on that, that subject. Father's love. You know, as a father, I, uh, I can see you know, my, when, when something, something's not right in my kids, like they're struggling with something or they've got an attitude or <laughs> something's going on, I can see it. And uh, no, they're all adults and married and everything, so I've learned, uh, I've learned through life, uh, don't answer questions that aren't asked. And that helps a lot to stay connected. Right? And so, as, as a father, nothing pleases me more than when one of my kids called me and said, hey, can we have lunch? Can we have a coffee? And we sit down, and they open up their heart, and they tell me what's going on. I'm telling you, uh, next to being saved, filled with the Spirit, <laughs> serving God, that for a man... There, there, I, there's nothing better than that. There's nothing that pleases a father more than to have a son or a daughter say, hey, Dad, I'm, I've got this going on. I've got that going on. So when we have this question, does God know my circumstances, my situation? A lot of times, we're, well, sure he does. Right? Sure he does, but... Have you talked to him about it? Have you sat down and said, here's how I feel this morning. Here's what's happening. Yeah, I know you know, but here's what's happening. Here's how I'm feeling about it. Nothing pleases the Father more than when we do that. Nothing. Question number two. Question number two. Is it too hard for him to handle is it too hard for him to handle? What do you think? What do you think? No, right? 
Yeah, is there anything God can't do? No, he can do it. Yeah. I've, I've learned this over the years with God. He's, uh, he's, never, he's never late, but he's never early either. Anybody have learned that one? Right? <laughs> he, you know, you've heard, oh, he's never late. I'll tell you, he's never early either. It's always on the line. But does he know our situation? Is it too hard for him to handle? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Third question. Third question. Does he have a plan for you? Does he have a plan for you? I believe he does. Scripture says if we commit our ways to the Lord, he will direct our path. God has a plan for all of us, and that is not to be spectators, but to be demonstrators in our situation, whatever it is, in our home, in our, our work, in ourselves, in our relationships, in our finances, whatever's going on in our lives, God has a plan for that situation. And he wants to hear from us so he can give us his love and wisdom so we can get an alignment, be living in in benefits. When Jesus said, you are the salt and the light of the world, by your good works, people will glorify my Father. Those good works are acts of obedience. Those good works are, I'm surrendered. I'm not worried about it. Jesus said not to worry. But I need the plan. I have to have the plan. Anybody else feel they need the plan? Well, he says he'll do it. He'll give it to us. And so, everybody got the three questions? Number one, does God know my situation? Number two, number three, does he have a plan for me? Yes, he does. Now, one action, one action. I'm going to ask you to, uh, to take seven minutes every day for the next 90 days. Takes seven minutes. Best time is the morning. And come to God and tell Him, this is my situation today. I know you can handle it. I know you've got a plan. Now, Lord, what's the plan? What's the plan? I'm surrendered. I'm not in resistance. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna start trying to control. What I want is your plan. And then, the, how many of you know the 80-20 rule? 80-20 rule. So, talk one minute, listen for four. So let's make it eight minutes. No, 10 minutes, right? Yeah, let's make it 10 minutes. Talk one minute, listen for four. Talk one minute, listen for four. Trust God, get on with your day. I believe that we're, we're, we're going to start seeing some incredible things happen in believers, in believers that are surrendered to the Lord. Believers that take time to let the Father know, here's how I'm feeling. Here's how I'm feeling, Dad. This has got me nervous. I don't know how this is going to turn out. This looks impossible. I prayed for a year that God would open up a door with a president from my office. And God did it. I believe... The deal is not that I met with a president. The deal is that God answered prayer. That's the deal about that. Just before I went to meet with this president, I got a call, and they said, uh, by the way, when you come in at the airport, you'll have presidential protocol. I thought, wow. But God spoke to me about Jesus. He said, here's the plan. Jesus made himself of no reputation. And he took on the form of a servant. And so, oh, we got to work on that branding, David. What's the branding on no reputation? 
form of a servant. Because isn't everything about reputation now? For getting a brand, having a reputation. And yet Jesus did it the other way. He made himself of no reputation, took on the form of a servant, and overcame. And so the action. Is everybody ready for the action? We're going to do half a step today. Go ahead and stand up with me. Go ahead and stand with me. If you got your phone, keep your phone there. Just, uh, and I want you to just, let's go through those questions. We're going to take five minutes. We're going to take a minute and tell God your situation right now. What are you feeling? What's going on? If we can have some uh, music up here or something, we can just put, we'll take five minutes and just say, okay, just, we were told, you know, we were asked today to focus on the Lord. Here's what's going to happen. As you start doing this, you're going to find out it's really hard to focus. It's really hard to focus on God. All kinds of thoughts are going to come. That's fine. That's fine. Just begin its alignment. Just begin. So take a minute and just bring whatever it is that you're feeling, your fears, your doubts, your, your, your you know, what's going to happen. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure how to deal with this. Bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Father right now. Just bring it to Him. Take a minute. He knows your situation, but, oh, He's pleased when we tell Him how we feel. He's pleased when we include Him in. It's a relationship. Here it is, Lord. Here's how I feel. Now, can God handle this situation? Can He handle it? Of course He can. Now, God, I need to know the plan. What is the plan? What do you want me to do in this? And now just listen. Just listen. Thank you, Lord. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you know our circumstances. Nothing is beyond what you can't handle. You can handle it all. And you have a plan for our situation and our circumstances, and you want to direct our paths. Lord, may we learn this new rhythm of life, of serving you, of being surrendered, to take the time to listen. What is your plan, Lord? Would you speak to me? Would you show me? What should I do about? what is going on. You'll start, you'll start, as you do this, I'll tell you, if you do this for the next 90 days, uh, it may grow past eight minutes. But God will give you names of people that maybe you should contact. He'll show you things that you should do. It will happen. It will happen. Because God's longing to show himself strong on our behalf, on behalf of his sons and daughters. It's, it, it, it's, you know, things happening up here has gotten us to here. But what's going to get us beyond here 
to what God is doing in the earth, it's got to happen there and there in you and in you and in you, no matter your age, no matter what generation, God, because you took the time to say, Lord, here's how I feel, Lord. I know you can handle it. I know you have a plan. Give me the, give me the plan. Show me the plan. Then as we go into that plan, God gets manifested. God's getting mad. You know, it's so funny. After I saw this president, I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten. But it wasn't about seeing the president. <laughs> people want to get, you know, so funny with famous people or people, if you think, you know, people act differently. It's not about that. It's about that God answers prayer. If I take the time to share what I'm feeling with him, believing that he can handle it and that he has a plan, he's going to do incredible things. And so I've, I've pushed the phone calls away because I, I think, hey, I'm of no reputation. I'm taking on the form of a servant, waiting for the next instructions. And they've come. I know what the next step is, and you will too. You will know what the next step is. You know, as teenagers today, you need to know the next steps. As mothers and fathers, you need to know the next steps. As grandparents, we need to know the next step. I'm so glad. I'm so glad because I have great 80 years old that are leading me, and I'm watching them, and I know that I can run the race. As long as God has given me breath, I can run the race and demonstrate that God has a plan. And when, when I get in alignment with his plan, great things begin to happen and our Father is glorified. Amen? Can you sit down? I'll take one more minute. Well, the rain has just finished, and so we'll, we'll let it dry up just one more minute. This, what, we've been, what I've been doing around the world is a methodology called the round table. And uh, it's transformation. And, and, you know, we come around and we, we look at, at God's wisdom and, 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 and His Word, you know, and, and, and His values, and we align with them, we take action, and, and we grow in character, we grow in, in faith, and uh, God moves in our lives. And it, it's a really good thing, and it's, uh, we started in 2013, we, we started collaborating with John Maxwell. Anybody here heard of John Maxwell? And so we started collaborating with John in 2013, and we started doing transformation. John said, well, what, why don't we do a nation? <laughs> and we said, a nation? Yeah, let's do a nation. He said, use my influence, and we'll do a nation. And whatever nation where the president invites us in, uh, we'll come, and we'll, 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 we'll do value-based leadership. We'll use the methodology of the round table. All right. The president of Guatemala invited us in. We went there, 2013, we started, um, and, you know, we, and John has 40,000 coaches around the world, and so John said, hey, this is the date we're going to launch, and so, uh, um, you know, these coaches signed up, paid their own way, paid their hotel, paid their food, and left an offering for an orphanage or some work that we would find in that country to help, and so we started, John would come and do uh, leadership. So we, once we had the letter from the president, then we would invite leaders in government, leaders in business, leaders in education, leaders in healthcare, leaders in police, leaders in military, uh, sports, and, and uh, media. And we'd invite all of these leaders in for a free uh, hour and a half conference with John on leadership. They would all come. So we would do two days of meetings. We'd maybe get, I don't know, seven to 10,000 people show up. And then we'd say, okay, John, at the end of each session, he'd say, now, I'm coming back in, in three months, and we're going to launch Guatemala, trans, you know, transform Guatemala, Guatemala transformation. And uh, we're going to come, I'm going to bring my coaches to the country. We're going to come to your place of business, to your office, to your locker room, wherever it is, to your military base. We're going to bring our coaches, and they're going to come and train you in leadership. And so, sign up. So they would sign up, and Jackie and I, my wife, we'd stay, because we speak Spanish, and we'd stay, and then we'd start working with everybody that signed up, 
and we would get them together in smaller groups. We'd say, okay, you signed up, you want a coach to come. The coach is gonna come, he's gonna bring an interpreter, we want you to, uh, to have a room ready. We, we need at least 20 people in the room to train in your, in your business, and, and then we're gonna come train. You're gonna bring a car, you're gonna come and pick them up at the airport. They're gonna come to your place, they're gonna train, you're gonna bring them back to us. And so we would set all that up, we'd find interpreters, we'd train the interpreters in the methodology, and then we'd bring all these coaches, we'd come into the country, 250 of them, we'd have interpreters, and then we would start the next day, and in the morning, they would go to 250 sites and train and come back. And then in the afternoon, they'd go to 250 more and train. In Costa Rica, the next country, that we, one of the countries we did, one night we did the church, they went out and did 100 churches in one night and trained. Right? And so then, everybody would be trained. They'd have 10 weeks of material. And then we'd, we'd say, okay, we'll be back in 12 weeks. Then John would come back in 12 weeks, and we'd say, bring everybody, all the facilitators that we trained, bring everybody that participated in the tables, and we'll have, we'll have a meeting. We'll have John with more leadership. So now we'd go to you know, sometimes 20, over 20 25,000 would, would show up in these, the second meeting. John would give another hour and a half of, of leadership, and he'd say, okay, so we're finished on Transformation Guatemala. Uh, thank you for coming. Now listen, uh, before you go, and you don't have to stay, but I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes, and, um, and then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna speak for 12 minutes. And uh, what I'm gonna speak on is the source, the wisdom, where I get all my material from. I'm gonna speak to you about my relationship with God. Now you don't have to stay. I understand now this is finished, you don't have to stay, but I'll be speaking on my relationship with God in about, in about 10 minutes, and so we'll see in 10 minutes. If you have to go, thank you for coming. You can get more material, start another round table. Well, 90% would stay, right? 90% would stay, and then John would get up and do 12 minutes on four pictures of God. Uh, three are wrong, one is right. He's at the door of your heart. He wants a relationship with you how many would like to respond? And so, hey, people would respond. They come to the front, we'd do a sinner's prayer. They'd go off the sides. We'd have Bibles for them, the Maxwell Leadership Bible. <laughs> we'd, they'd get a Bible and they'd be on their way. And then we had their information. And so we started that in 2013 in Guatemala. We then went to Paraguay. Uh, we then went to Costa Rica. We then went to Dominican Republic. Then we went to Panama. Uh, the last two, my wife and I decided we had enough. <laughs> we had the t-shirt. We had trained enough people. Uh, maybe God had something else for us, but I stayed on as a consultant. And uh, went to Panama consulting, and I went to uh, Dominican consulting. But uh, uh, this past August, we just celebrated a million uh, souls, a million decisions for Christ wow. in that time. And so, that is, we call that uh, Global Priority Solutions it's Methodology Roundtable. It's really effective for business people and so on. As a matter of fact, we're in Toronto, uh, the Toronto Catch the Fire Church next, next weekend, and I think there's like 150 people signed up, business people, and we're going to train them in Global Priority Solutions. Now, a couple of years ago, I was in a meeting, and I heard a word about um, King, uh, the prophet Elisha. Do you remember the story when the kings, he was being attacked by another king, and uh, he was always, and, and, but Elisha would tell him where the attack would take place, and then he would show up before them, and his whole strategy was to surprise them, but then he never could surprise them, and finally the, the enemy king brought his people together, and he said, something's wrong. We've got a spy in our midst. There's somebody, something's wrong. And the guy said, oh, no, no, no. It's the prophet Elisha. He's, he's telling him everything you plan. He's even telling him what you say in your bedroom. And I thought, oh, man, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what Jesus meant when he said, I will send you the Spirit. He will guide you. He will guide you. And so... 
both Jackie and I have prayed about it, and we felt like it's time to take the round table to the dinner table. And so we rewrote material and made it more family friendly. And we, and we call it the Family Legacy Project. And um, mom and dads, um, we've piloted it now in, in one church. We've had 18 families. We just started a few months ago. We've had 18 families go through it. And uh, it's been so interesting. Talk about distractions and talk about uh, so busy that there's no time for God. Talk about challenge. But they're, they're coming back to us saying, man, I thought this was for the kids, but it's really for about us. But it's helping the kids. Kids are telling us this is, we're having, I, never, I, never, I never knew my dad felt that way. I never knew, I never knew my brother and sister felt that way. Because a round table is you, you read the material. For example, we, we start with the round table on forgiveness. And, and you read about forgiveness and you underline what stands out to you. And then you share one thing that stands out to you. And the kids, kids share, always starts with mom and dad and go around to the kids. And, and, then, and then, then you evaluate yourself. How are you with forgiveness, one to 10? How are you doing this past week? How have you been doing? And then we train the parents and uh, we spend a morning with the parents and we, we train them and we get, we say, you have to be brutally honest. And we tell them, you know, your kids are gonna love this. Do you know why? Because they can't wait. Once they do the first round table, they can't wait till next week to see what's the subject next week. Let's see, what's dad gonna give, what number is dad gonna give himself? <laughs> right? If we're looking at attitude, you're waiting to say, all right, dad, all right, mom, what number are you gonna give yourself? Because you remember the other night when you came home? <laughs> I think that was a one. <laughs> Let's see if you give yourself a one, right? And so kids know us better than anybody, but it's an incredible way for parents to have an opportunity to demonstrate to their children that we must be truthful about ourselves and truthful before God and align ourselves when we're out of alignment. Anyways, I'll just finish with one story because sometimes not all the kids read, and so there was this little girl, she didn't read, so we give them, uh, we, we made up some stuff that they could color. So they can be at the table with the family, but they're not reading, but they're coloring. And they're listening. They're listening. So they were doing honesty. And, uh, and they went around, and, and they were going to skip her because she's just coloring. She's sitting there coloring, and as they went, she said, hey, I want to say something. I said, well, what's that? She goes, well, I haven't been honest. I said, why? What happened? Well, you know, the kids in the neighborhood, they tell me that they've got this game and that video game and that game, and I say, oh, we got that too. And we don't. So I've been lying. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to tell them about it. All right, that's your action. Everybody takes an action every week. That's your action. So the next week they came back and said, how did it go? Did you tell your friends that you did? Yes, I did. I told them. You know all those, I don't have them. I was lying to you. What did they say? They were, okay. They kept going. But she learned about honesty. So I uh, just want to share with you that uh, I think I'll be talking with Pastor about that, but, but there's so many ways right now that we can, we can open space is up for God to move in. When you take time and ask those three questions, you're opening up a space for God to move in, for the Holy Spirit to work. When you're opening up a time with your family, you're making time for the Holy Spirit to come in and work. And so uh, this is going to be a great time as we move forward. You know, you know, I thought of this this morning, and I couldn't remember her name. Who's the, who's the, who's the, big singer, blonde, what's her name, the big singer, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, well, he's a musician, he's a musician, Taylor Swift, uh, I, I saw a deal on, on, on television, on, on Netflix or something, and I was a drummer, so for me, the, the biggest thing is the opening of concerts, the opening, I, I love, how are they going to open, and then how are they going to close, you know, how are they going to close? Well, you know what they do, right? When, in concerts, you know, the 20,000 people go in there and, 
And now, you know, it's, it's coming close to showtime, and it's coming closer, and then pretty soon, lights start going off. And what happens? What happens? The crowd gets loud. What happens? So, so let's see how loud this crowd can get. Are you ready? Are you ready? So, so the lights are going out. You're anticipating. You're anticipating. You're anticipating. Okay. One to ten. Right now we're about here. So, so give it to me. Give it to me. Come on. Get it up to ten. You know, maybe if you paid $300 for a ticket, you'd be more enthused, right? But here's the thing. Here's where I think we're going. When we start coming together, we'll be celebrating what God's doing in our lives. Yes. We're not so much attenders anymore. We're in the adventure of Christianity. And when we start talking about, when we come in together, hey, what happened to you this way? Hey, what's going on? And when it's time to worship, When the preacher makes a good point. Father, I thank you for this house. I thank you for what you're going to do here. I thank you for the future that you have for this house. And that's not, when we say the house, that's for each individual in this room. I thank you, Lord, how you want to just bring fire into our lives. Not, not so much in, in a meeting room, but in life. But we have an enthusiasm because we know that you know our situation. We know that it's not too hard for you to handle it. And we know that you have a plan and we're tuning in on your plan and we're seeing your name glorified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen.